or further to the south of us. That's where we've had our crews traveling not only in the metro, but even along Highway 75. Now we have John Kipper who's joining us now. He is live. You guys have made a little stop right now. Tell us what you've been dealing and what you're seeing and where you're located. Yeah. John. <laughs> yeah, Jen, right now we are stopped at a Casey's gas station in Plattsmouth right off Highway 75 and Oak Hill Road. And as you can tell, it's been coming down um, at a very rapid pace right now, and it's been doing so for quite some time. We've been in this area for well over an hour, and really since we've been down here, it has been just a downpouring of snow. As you might imagine, the road's visibility is very, very slim. You can only see um, just a few yards ahead of you. So people in terms of miles an hour are just going 20, 25, 30 miles an hour because that's all you can really do right now. Um, you can't even really see the lanes and it might be tough to see exactly behind me, but you can even see some of the road signs, street signs. Those are completely covered with snow. So if you don't really know where you're going, it makes it all that much harder right now. Um, in terms of the roads being slick, it has steadily gotten more and more slippery as the morning has persisted as well. And as you can tell, snow continuing to fall here. It should only get worse. Winds also a factor right now, just blowing the snow all over the place. So things are a mess right now south of Omaha right now in the Plattsmouth area. We're going to be traveling around here as well as going into Sarpy County a little bit to monitor that situation. But as you can tell, it's it's a snowy day down here in Cass County. Certainly is, and yes, you are located right where the heaviest bands are setting up and where the more significant snow totals are expected to be. I want to thank you very much, John, for a great report. Really do appreciate it. Guys, stay safe out there. Now we also have Jake Wazikowski who is out in the field, and they've been able to make a little stop now. Jake, tell us where you're at and kind of what you've been seeing on the road conditions as you've been traveling this morning. Jennifer, we're stopped at the Sap Brothers uh, truck stop here at uh, I-80 and 144th Street. Uh, the snow has significantly decreased, but the wind is still picking up. This is all we have so far. As you can see, it's not sticking much, but underneath it, the ground is getting pretty uh, hard and icy under there, uh, which uh, wasn't the case uh, quite some time ago. But from what we have saw on the interstate, I-80, um, a lot of the blowing snow is kind of covering the right lane if you're going westbound of I-80 and the left lane if you're heading eastbound. Uh, you know, probably about an hour ago is when we started seeing some of the roads be covered completely. We've seen a number of NDOT trucks out. Some were just uh, doing uh, salt and sand uh, earlier in the morning, but as of late, we've seen them putting the blades down in places to uh, get that snow off the roads. But again, uh, really in the last probably 20 minutes or so, the snow has really decreased uh, in the capacity in this area, but the winds are still the biggest factor. Talked to a, a couple of people out here who said that they're glad that, uh, you know, they, the roads were treated beforehand and, uh, you know, it's, it's not been too bad uh, a driving so far. Uh, talking to people working here as well, they say it's been uh, business pretty much as usual for many of the truckers that are uh, coming in and uh, who, who go through these conditions uh, pretty frequently. But again, we've seen the snow kind of deteriorate but the ground has gotten much harder and the, the, uh, the ice is uh, starting to pick up underneath uh, that uh, sheet of snow out here uh, off of I-80. But again, uh, you know, the, the road conditions aren't too bad. NDOT says slow down if you're driving on the interstate. Uh, but again, the roads are still open on the interstate. Nothing's been closed down or anything uh, as of yet. Uh, we, we, we didn't see any accidents or crashes or anything like that. We saw a couple of people uh, off to the side of the road in the shoulder, but we're only there for a, a short period of time. But again, uh, the snow has really, uh, has really died down a little bit out here uh, along I-80 and 144th Street. Jen. Thanks very much, Jake. And yeah, great updates. Please stay safe out there and guys kind of warm up a little bit here and we'll continue to keep checking back with you. We're showing you a live view right now from our uh, Omaha World Herald. Actually, this is from our Harris Casino cam and visibility even from this vantage point has improved significantly than what we saw as you know, Jake was just mentioning over the last 20 minutes or so. Visibility is easing up a little bit, starting to lift. Uh, still, the wind, that is going to be one of the biggest factors that we are going to see continuing to impact us. We talked about that this storm system wasn't going to bring in a ton of snow to the metro. Again, the heavier pockets of snow expected to be further south of I-80 between Lincoln, Nebraska City, Plattsmouth, also down to the south between Maryville, St. Joe, Beattie, 
mattress in Fall City. That is where the more substantial snowfall is expected to be, and that is not changing at all. So we are again seeing things decreasing as far as the overall snow coverage between Denison, Tecama, Columbus, Norfolk. Things winding down from north to south, and now we're starting to see an improvement over Douglas County. Still have the snow coming down steady right along Sarpy County between Gretna and even over Papillion, Ralston, and off at Air Force Base. Still looking at some significant snow over parts of southern Sarpy County. We'll get to that in a moment, but our Maya signs had been out at the airport at Epley Airfield talking to some of the people uh, that have been traveling this morning, trying to get to the airport, and here's the latest information that we're getting on just how things are kind of panning out with people traveling back and forth and heading to the airport this morning. Yeah, you never know, I guess. You just hope for the best, and, and uh, so I think the road crews are doing a good job this morning, and so we didn't have too many issues at all. And as he was talking about, again, they were coming up from Plattsmouth, also looking at not bad road conditions. They got like a half hour head start on it, and that's been the case for a lot of folks. Again, a lot of air travel today because, again, this is going to be really one of the big travel days because of Thanksgiving on Thursday. And now we're looking at air travel that will be impacted the further east you go down to the south between Kansas City, St. Louis, and Chicago as the day wears on and the storm system continues to move off to the east of us. But after all that, rain that we saw filling in between Fall City, Maryville and Clorinda, and this is the area that will still see a lot of snow. Uh, now the switchover is taking place and the snow continues to come down. Here's a close up view and we'll get with Ryan McPike here in just a moment, but you can see that a lot of holes and things between Elkhorn and even Boys Town right now. Millard snow is tapered off significantly and looking at this slowly moving southward. So it's starting to wind down a little sooner than we expected, which is great news. But the only thing that we have to keep in mind is that the cold and the wind kicking up and now we're going to start to see those parking lots, those sidewalks, even secondary streets and neighborhood streets that will be impacted because of the cold air and a lot of this still blowing around causing reduced visibility, especially further to the south that we go and you can see how large the storm system is again all the way back over the eastern plains of Colorado into central and western Kansas, southern Nebraska and now spreading right along the I-80 corridor going in into parts of Iowa and extending eastward, starting to see some showers in Chicago, still dry in St. Louis, but this storm system will eventually start impacting those areas. Let's check in with Ryan McPike right now and more of the specific details on who's seeing those heavier bands of snow and kind of where we're seeing some of the highest accumulation. Ryan? Yeah, Jen, I tell you, your last couple of graphics really just kind of tell the story. Uh, you saw your up close metro vantage point there, the radar dry air moving into most of Douglas County. Visibilities are improving, accumulating still in some spots, probably done the way it looks, although it looks like maybe a few flurries, a few snow showers redeveloping. Uh, still some accumulating snow as we saw from John's live shot uh, towards Plattsmith, so right along the Platte River there, parts of Sarpy down into Cass County. The real business part of this storm, though, and kind of the part two of the map there that Jen was showing, that low, that big L on the map east southeast of Wichita continues to dig to the east and southeast and what that's doing is pulling this whole mass of moisture and snow down to the south and east and we find ourselves now on the edge of that and continue to watch that snow line drop from north to south. So we're done back to the northwest. In fact, the weather service canceling advisories in northeast and parts of north central Nebraska with the last few hours. The problem is what we're looking at here are snow rates <coughs> still excuse me, still a quarter to a third of an inch along the Platte River and just south of Interstate 80 into parts of Iowa. Then you get into southeast Nebraska, northeastern Kansas, and now that the storm is kind of digging and it's going to make its loop up south of Kansas City, this whole area is going to fill in, say from Fall City toward Maryville. And as that pulls that more south and east, that's why the snow amounts are expected now to be a little heavier from St. Joe down to Kansas City on the south end of this, where locally they'll easily see over a half a foot of snow there. And the going forecast, 6 to 10 inches still likely, say mm, probably Highway 2 south, 136 down toward 36 from northeast Kansas into northwest Missouri. That seems to be where the axis of heaviest snow is going to be. As far as amounts go, it's going to kind of vary in the metro. Again, haven't seen anything officially come in into Sarpy County, at least uh, yet. I did see Becky over at the National Weather Service uh, reported two inches out at Valley for their official. We'll see what Epley does. I'm guessing probably in the one to two inch range. It looked like we were pushing about two here at the station. Um, and as Jen was saying, it's almost like a paste. Earlier we were with our crews driving around, kind of hitting those live shots. 
It was sticking to the signs, sticking to the poles, making it hard to see where you were going, not only with visibility, but you couldn't read the road signs because it was kind of covering all that up. So it's more or less kind of a wet snow, uh, although, as you said, winds are going to continue strong, and as the temperature drops, it dries out a little bit, so still some blowing and drifting. Obviously, bigger concerns if you're headed south of us, uh, where we continue with those blizzard warnings, and snow will continue for several hours as you go off in that direction. But we're kind of seeing that in from north to south here. At the yeah, we really south. are. So, uh, yeah, we're seeing things winding down, which is great news. But as we mentioned, again, because of the wind and the cold, and even though we're sitting at about 30 degrees yeah. right now, temperatures Sick. will only continue to drop. And then you add that wind in it. Yeah. And so again, sidewalks, uh, the roadways, secondary streets, your neighborhood streets, that stuff is going to start icing yeah. up. Parking lots, those are going to be some major uh, impacted sure. areas here, even in the metro. And we mentioned this really pretty much all week long, that yeah. this was not going to be a huge snow event here in the metro. Right. Again, the more significant impact south further us, yeah. south of us, and that's where we're going to see amounts potentially between 6 to 10 inches more over extreme southeastern Nebraska, northwestern Missouri, and again, southwestern parts of Iowa. So that is going to be the hardest hit areas. Here's a live view right now this from our Harris better. Casino cam and look at how beautiful yeah. the wintry scene is. Yeah. Visibility has improved significantly, I would say within the last 20, 30 sure. minutes or yeah. so. Temperature wise though, we're still sitting at 30, but look at these winds. They have definitely picked up That's in speed. Yeah. That's sustained at 37 miles an hour. And when you look at the rest of the area, still have 20 to even close to 30 mile per hour winds sustained. Then you add the gust in and look at this. We're now up to 50 mile per hour wind gust yeah, here in the metro. Wow. Most locations and this is what we talked about. The key component to all of this is yeah. that not only the cold, the snow, but you add the wind into all of this and it just makes it so dangerous outside. Yeah, wow. Then you combine the wind and the temperature and this is what we're looking at. The wind chill readings only continue to keep dropping single digits and teens, and this is where they're going to stay for most of the day, probably yeah. most likely dropping off because now that the cold air is moving in, snow's winding down, wind speeds are picking up, and they're not expected to ease up a whole lot because no. look at this. This is the overall trend here for the next several hours, and we stay at 30 plus mile per hour wind gusts up until about 11 o'clock tonight, and even early in the morning when you're going to be doing the morning right. show, <laughs> it's still going to be pretty windy outside, so the bus stop is going to be brutal. And yeah, like you said, low temperatures get colder, so we're talking wind chill factors. Teens now, probably single digits, maybe above and below zero by tomorrow morning. By tomorrow morning, yeah. certainly, and that's yeah. going to have a huge impact as the kids are heading to the bus stop. That's true. You're heading to work and school. As far as the overall impacts, yes, we're, we're kind of covering things not only on air, but also online as well as Facebook. So if you want to stay with us for the latest information and continuing more extended coverage, Plus, once the sun's coming up, which is starting to do now, we'll yeah. start to get some better pictures and views sure. of what's going yeah. on. Please send your pics yes. to us at pics at 3newsnow.com. We'll continue to keep providing more updates, so stay with us here on 3 News Now.